Well, hello there, Mark Risen Hopkins here, cryptocurrency and blockchain enthusiast who's been studying and learning about this space since 2011. And today we're going to talk about ICOs. What are they? It's a mystical space that people don't quite understand even in the uh, cryptocurrency world. The SEC doesn't believe that the public is smart enough to understand it as a sophisticated investor. Let's fix that today. Stay tuned. <laughs> What is an ICO? Let's start with the terminology and then we'll get into the technology. An ICO stands for Initial Coin Offering. It's a little bit of a misnomer in that it's not exactly like the thing that is named after initial, initial public offering, but it, is, it bears a similarity in many respects. So we'll kind of go over and compare and contrast. An Initial Coin Offering stands for usually an ERC-20 token on the Ethereum network. If you recall from previous episodes, an ERC-20 token is a creation of uh, tokens that are usually for sale or for trade that live on top of the Turing complete blockchain we know as Ethereum. It can be used for any variety of purposes, whether it be for utility or to represent a security in a company or anything in between. Uh, but in an initial coin offering, typically what that means is that the token has been created to usually raise funds for some type of blockchain project uh, or some sort of blockchain related operation. Um, the sale uh, of the token is actually usually held in a specific way as well. Uh, creating the ERC-20 token is one piece of the puzzle, uh, which does not necessarily necessitate uh, a ICO, but once you have the tokens, then you can lock them up into a smart contract that allows you to sell them at a flash sale style event. What does that mean exactly? So. We've talked about smart contracts in the past. To refresh your memory, a smart contract is an ability to write a set of code conditions that will execute on the Ethereum network as long as the execution criteria are all objectively measurable, meaning something that, that doesn't require human judgment to determine if the satisfaction conditions have been met. So in, a, in the instance of an ICO, we're talking about is the money, is the value, has the value been transferred into the smart contract? Uh, if the answer is yes, then go to the address where the value transfer came from and send them an equivalent predetermined number of tokens. Uh, we'll put some concrete numbers on that. Uh, we can talk about uh, an ICO that we're working with today uh, called Veritoken. Veritoken is going to be uh, launching their ICO uh, sometime over the next few months. They are going to be charging the rough equivalent of 10 cents per token at the ICO event. What they will do is they will, at the day of the event, take a measurement of what a roughly 10 cents worth of Ethereum is equal to. They'll open up the ICO and say, okay, every 10 cents worth of Ethereum you send into this smart contract, you will get one Vera token token back in your wallet. And then from that, they will use the funds to uh, operate the marketplace and transfer uh, back and forth and seed the marketplace with the Vera token so that people can use the uh, service. Uh, there is a variety of classifications of, uh, of ICOs, uh, one that kind of exceeds the bounds of what we're going to talk about today. But in general, uh, from a legal perspective, uh, there are two governing bodies that try to take jurisdiction over how these ICOs are governed. Whereas in the, the world of Wall Street, IPOs are generally governed by the SEC uh, because all IPOs are considered to be securities. In the world of ICOs, there's, there's a spectrum of utility that exists on these, these tokens themselves. Uh, and the SEC, as, as of the time of this recording, claims jurisdiction on most of those because ICOs uh, are, are measured against a, a legal standard called the Howey test. And, in general, if you're using uh, the sale of anything like this to raise money for operations of your company, it generally uh, will fit the legal criteria of a security. The exception to this rule might be if it is fitting the legal criteria of a utility token, which is something that is governed by the regulatory body, body CFTC. Uh, a utility token, way oversimplified, is a Chuck E. Cheese token. You go into Chuck E. Cheese, you put money into a machine, you get some little tokens out, or you, maybe they're preloaded on a card these days. And that token is really only useful for one thing, the marketplace of Chuck E. Cheese. You can 
take those tokens and exchange them for minutes of entertainment at various you know, uh, arcades and skee ball and, and whatnot like that. Many of the ICOs at launch are using the sale of these tokens to fund the, uh, fund the creation of the company, but the tokens themselves are only useful uh, or primarily only useful uh, in the marketplace created by the, the startup themselves. So that's what an ICO is. On a future episode, we're going to talk about how to launch your own. So definitely stay tuned for that on this channel. Well, there you have it, your blockchain and cryptocurrency prescription. As always, these are just my thoughts and I encourage you to seek out a second opinion. Subscribe for more videos on blockchain and cryptocurrency and if you enjoyed today's video, share with a friend so they can see. Thanks for watching and don't forget to see the receptionist on your way out.